Yes, the United States of America is in a recession right now. Every time I say that, someone always pushes back and goes, Glendon, well, what about this? And there would be a link to an economic indicator that will either be low unemployment or more traditionally, the stock market. There's the American economy and there's the American stock market and money markets and capital markets. There's the stock exchange, the Dow, the uh, bond market. That's not the real economy. The real economy is your paycheck, what's happening with retail, what's happening with car sales, what's happening with trucking. The stock market is not the real economy because regardless of the economic climate, you can win whether times are good or times are bad. The real economy, let's take retail for example. There was no other strategy for these people other than to go out of business. Now why is that? You think these people wanted to go out of business? Hey, let's just go out of business. They tried things for years, but due to the economic depression of retail, they slid into oblivion. Toys R Us is gone, Sears is gone, JC and Penny's hanging on by maybe a fingernail. The internet has displaced many traditional markets. In 2006, when I had my thrift store, the upscale garage sale, I noticed a rapid change in demographics. Before 2006, we would have mostly Hispanics, we would have a few white people and a few black people, but our core and butter from people just walking in from the signs were Hispanics. And most of our white and black customers came from Craigslist. Well, I saw a serious upshot in the number of white people that we had coming in our shop in 2006. Many people would come in and we would talk and I would ask them about their lives and I would find out that many of these people were going through economic hardships. Now, why is this important? The recession wasn't really called in 2000, until 2008, but it started in 2006. The information that I give you at Money, Income, and Profit is real financial information based upon real experience. So if you're going to like, hey, you know, we are not in a recession because the stock market is doing so well. Well, take these facts. On the video the other day, and you should watch all of these videos so you don't look like boo-boo the fool about leaving one of these comments, that yes, 42% of Americans are invested in the stock market. Aha, well, the average person has $109,000 in their 401k. But when we go just to the median, which is the real number, we find out that they only have $25,000. So 42% of the country is in the market in some shape, fashion, or form, but when you narrow it down, the rich get richer and the poor become more poor. It's the same people. It's the upper 10% of the people in the market that have like 85% of the wealth in the market. Let me say that again. It's only the upper 10% that has the majority of the money in the market. You may have a neighbor who has a 401k and it's like, yeah, man, my 401k, we're doing well, we're up 30%. Translate that into real numbers. Hey, you know, uh, I had 25,000 bucks, my portfolio is up 30%, so now I'm up $32,000, yay! The thing is, most people don't have enough money to re really participate in the market where it's gonna benefit them long-term or short-term in an economic manner. And this is one of the things that the millennials have discovered because of this very important part, regardless of what the economy does, you can win in the stock market. It's a rigged system in some ways, if you think about it. There's so many different ways you can make money in the capital markets, it's ridiculous. But the real economy running real businesses depending upon customers, invoices, and real cash, that's a different animal. And that's why stock brokers and mutual fund managers go after small business owners because that's where the money is. If you're going to come on this channel, do yourself a favor, watch a few videos and stop believing that Wall Street is the economy. It's not. It is like part of the economy. Wall Street is a way that certain companies, usually the very big companies, are able to extract money out of the American public to continue their operations. So if they do a really good job at making money and continuing their operations, they give value back to the public in the forms of appreciation stocks or dividends. But there's not a lot of people who are playing this game. I mentioned Wells Fargo. You would need literally 
three to four million dollars of Wells Fargo stock to get proper dividends. That's what you would need at $47. Broaden your horizons and really look at the total marketplace. When I made my prediction that Bitcoin was going to crash and came true, it wasn't based upon reading charts and indicators and you know uh, candles and all this other stuff they talk about. It was based upon who is going to buy Bitcoin. Whenever you start a business, your first question you should ask yourself is, who is my marketplace? Who's my audience? And the second question you should ask yourself is, is my audience or marketplace growing or dying? Those are two very, very important questions. Because if you don't ask yourself those questions, you could start a perfectly good business, uh, put a lot of time, effort into your business, and your marketplace is dying. And you're like, I'm working harder. I'm making more sale calls, but we still, revenues are still going down because there's just not enough people in your marketplace to keep you afloat. And this is one of the reasons that I created this channel because there are so many people who don't seem to understand the stock market is part of the real economy. I've watched these videos, I've listened to these people, and most of them make above average income and they're married to someone that makes above average income. So what they're doing is correct. They're making money, they're putting the money into investments and the investments are growing in value. What they're not telling you and what many of them don't even know, and I'm gonna address this in a minute, they're not looking at it from a broad market perspective. Here's an example. Everybody needs to lose weight or most people need to lose weight. Losing weight is consuming less calories than you take in, but it's a very hard thing to do. Money. How do you get more money? You spend less money than you make. It's a very hard thing to do. And there's another interesting concept with people in the fire movement. I call it blind spots and deficiencies because of the circle they're in and everyone they know, they think that many people are just like them. When they don't realize, because they haven't done the research, they haven't looked at the numbers, they haven't looked at what people make, that most people are not in the position to do what they're doing because they don't have enough economic firepower. And this will be debatable and people will say this and they'll bring up this guy who was a parking lot attendant, made 12 bucks an hour, he saved up um, half a million dollars in 40 years. That's something to be congratulated. It's a, a feat, but I made more money in the business in one year. Part of this thing, and one of the things that I want to get you guys clued in on, is America is moving toward contract workers and freelancers. And in 10 years, so many jobs, so many positions, you will have a freelance association with your employer or the guy that gives you money. It's not real. So instead of sitting there and waiting for that to happen, why don't you take control and make that happen like right now? So we're going to move into the pitch. Moneyincomeandprofit.com is a website that's going to teach you to follow the two tenets. Make more money, manage the money well. If you do these two things, you can change the economic life of your children. And this is something you can look up. Your children's inheritance is not what you tell them it's going to be but it's going to be, they're going to be essentially a mirror of you. So if you want your kids to be happy, successful, and wealthy, you need to be happy, successful, and wealthy. And no, we're not going to talk about the immigrant stories. That's a whole different thing that I'll address in another video. So for those of you who are interested in accelerating this process, go below and get your basic financial education. It's in the first comment. And in the second comment, I have a few things for people who want to really accelerate the process. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.